Before you call them friend, gotta prove them first Cause they're really loyal to you when you're at your worst We need to hit her all like the wire You're looking for some truth, I'll supply If you want it too soft, this ain't deal You gon' choose a law of a sin This just some uncut gems This just some uncut gems We was diamonds in the dirt just grinding in the turf, our mama go berserk, trying to keep from riding in the hearse. Now we lines in the work, sons of Zion, we the church. Different color fringes is looking vibrant on my shirt, and time lying in the dirt. I pray to be a fire hydrant with this word, like a geyser on the curb. First and foremost, I'm going to say call Halal, but now we are Abu Baha. Shimma Mashiach, Baki, Abu Shalom, Outside of Allah, Sunnis, Mexico, Baki, Sunnis, 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 to the Lost Lunas Decalogue, you know, where North Kingdom inscribed the Ten Commandments. Let's get it. Alright. Get another hike. We're gonna be going right up into the mountains right now. Excuse the audio, but it's a very windy day out here in New Mexico. I will say this, the countryside is pretty damn nice. little height. I think it's about what two miles. So I recommend every Israelite if they can come out here come see this part of our history man. Still walking. Yo, check this out though. You're gonna come up to an arrow made out of rocks. Whether it's something that's happened more recently, been here, follow the path. Just follow the path. We still at the base of the mountain. Still got a long ways to go. Look at this. Is that another arrow? Look at this. Got a whole nother arrow. Somebody was nice enough to do some shit. Oh, it's a lot. Do some nice things. Point in the right direction. Oh yeah. Remember this giant rock face. I'm gonna keep going this way. Lord and Christ. So there's going to be a couple of stone arrows on the ground. Just keep following the path until you reach a little gated fence there. And then you'll start your ascent up into the But yeah, what you want to do to get to the spot at the start is literally right at the Laguna Indian Reservation just across from the uh, landfill exit. Park in front of the landfill and begin your journey. Part of me wonders if our Northern Kingdom brothers even visit this place anymore. Seeing as how the reservation is just around the corner. Look at that. Sun just came out. Just beautiful. Off into the distance over there is a gate opening that will start the ascent up. Watch where you step. It does get a bit sandy. recommend keeping your feet and your hands out of them. Yeah, but just think of this trek that our forefathers had to do. Come up here and write this to inscribe it into a rock face. 
there are some Christian apologists out there that had an attempt to debunk the death of Hebrew that is inscribed on this rock face in the form of sentences to make statements. The language that was of the ancient Phoenician text where it had dialects of Sumerian or Samaritan, my bad. Of course, Phoenician, those of the original Philistines. And of course, Israelite dialect We're all using the same characters We're all using the same characters and one congregational aspects right approaching the gate and as you can see follow the arrows as the lovely lady just pointed out, this is the arrow. Not gonna lie, I have a fear of quicksand, which is why I do not like the desert. So yeah. Yeah, I have a fear of dying in quicksand. It's a thing. Yeah, I don't like it. Alright. Go through this gate. All right, so the arrow pointing. Now it's time to start the ascent into the mountains. All right, it is a bit of a lengthy hike. I think it was what, like two, like a mile and a half, almost two miles. Entirely. Well worth it though. Well worth it. Especially when you actually get to see the finished project. Again, see? Again, not sure who laid them out. However, they are laid out indeed. No signs of wildlife, though I do not recommend to go looking. Alright? fork in the road which way do I go all right let's figure out which way to go started walking through the mountain. Ah, I remember this. If I'm not mistaken, this guy was made by an Israelite Shaw. He and his wife made the journey up here many years ago. Shout out to that brother and leaving these arrows. If it wasn't him, then it was brothers before him I know he inscribed his name somewhere up here though Ooh, follow the arrows and it'll lead you to the right direction and let me tell you this is a workout Cord when there's some more stable footing. All right, 
it doesn't look like much right here but here's the thing you don't have to go all the way up the mountain to get to it but family the hike is well worth it be careful and watch your step because guess what our forefathers were here People have tried to chip it off, degrade the inscribings, but it's here. All praises to the most. Shalom on family. First and foremost, I'm going to give call halal. I've been now Yahweh Baha Shem Hamashiach Malaki Havashai. This is Brother Matati Abamba Nyamyan from Sakari Dallas, Sakari DTX. Um, just recently, I was blessed enough to be able to go out to what is known as the Los Lewis Decalogue, right? Um, most of us, uh, well, I won't say most, but the, the, if you don't know what it is, it is essentially the Ten Commandments written in the rock face in the midst of a mountain about 30 minutes outside of Los Lewis, New Mexico. And as we know, you know, in these lands in America... Uh, we know that, that, you know, the Northern Kingdom was out here, you know, talking about, you know, the House of Ephraim. You got Gad, Reuben, um, Asher, you got uh, 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 Issachar, you got Zebulon, you, you know, you got, um, you, you got, you got the, the ten tribes is what you would call them, right? So they would have been the ones out here to be, you know, to be the ones that wrote it. And it's not just Ten Commandments written in English, it's the Ten Commandments written in the Paleo-Hebrew, right? Um, so yeah, if you, if you saw the, the, uh, the earlier video that led up to this or the various clips of videos, I did try to do a brief lesson, uh, while at the Los Angeles Decalogue. However, because it was not, not completely high up in the mountains. However, the surface area in which there is for people to stand, it's not very big. The winds were extremely high. Um, so it, it did grow to be somewhat dangerous. Uh, to actually attempt to record out there. It's hence why one, I, I did essentially try to keep it short. Um, sound quality is not as good, but at least this way I'll be able to go more in depth into the stone and also, you know, through the spirit and power, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh um, I'll be able to, you know, prove that it had to have been Northern Kingdom that did it in regards to how. It is, because it is the Ten Commandments written in a stone face, and we're about to get into, you know, who would be the people that did it, as well as, you know, we're going to get into some scriptures about it as well. Um, a lot of people are skeptical about Wikipedia, but I don't know if you guys can see my mouse here. These these numbers right here, actually, you know, they cite sources. You see what I'm saying? That's how you can check if something's actually valid or not. That one little thing pulled up all these sources right here. So if you're on Wikipedia, check the sources that are on there, right? So that way you can know that the information that you're reading, though people can go in and just submit it, you can know whether or not it's viable information or not, right? But let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're going to do a little bit of reading on the internet, and then we're going to get to some scripture, right? So there's a little thing that people like to call Samaritanism, right? So Samaritanism is an, a, an Arabic monotheistic ethnic religion, as they call it, of the Samaritan people, an ethnic religious group who, alongside Jews, originate from the ancient Israelites. And again, this goes into the sightings that right here. You know, you got the Samaritan update uh, retrieved October uh, 2021 going down. You have sources from 1994. The Shemelit Silah, uh, the head of the Rebbeinite Karite and Samaritan Jews on history of a title. Um, let's see, you got Coggins, 1975. You see, uh, you have Grunbaum M. Geiger Rappaport, 1862. Uh, Mitgeth Ithleten Osfassend Überdad <laughs> Samaritan. I'm pretty sure that's German. But again, you know, you, you have these sources to go to, right? So continuing on, 
So it's letting already off the bat, it's letting you know that these are the same people, the people of Samaria and the so-called Jews. That's Northern and Southern Kingdom. We're going to get into that, right? Its central holy text is the Samaritan Pentateuch, which Samaritans believe is the original unchanged version of the Torah, which is used by the Jews. In addition to the Samaritan Pentateuch, Samaritans also revere their version of the book of Joshua and recognize and and recognize some later biblical figures such as Eli. The Samaritan religion is is internally described as the holy faith that begun with Moses unchanged over the millennia that have since passed. Samaritans believe that the Jewish Torah and Judaism by extension have been corrupted by time, no longer serve the duties of the Most High, mandated to the Israelites on Mount Sinai, while Jews in the Temple Mount Jerusalem as the most sacred location of their faith, Samaritans instead regard it as Mount Gerizim near Nebulus. So that, that's just to give a preface on what Samaritanism is. Basically, that's just their way of saying what the Northern Kingdom was following in regards to quote-unquote religion. Salaki, one second. Salaki. All right. But yeah, that, that's essentially just what they're going into in regards to it, right? But the, the reason why I wanted to bring this out, because um, essentially this is the second page that I found, right? But the reason why I brought this up was this. Let's go back a page. If my slow ass internet will load. There we go. All right. So again, you know, still on Wikipedia. Essentially what we're going to be going, what we're reading about right now is what's called the Karite and the Samaritan Masusa. If you don't know what a mezuzah is, um, well, you know, if you're just coming into this thing, essentially the mezuzah is, it's that plaque that we're supposed to put on our doorpost pursuant to Deuteronomy 6 chapter. Um, or it could be a plaque, or you can handwrite it, but essentially it's the law that we're supposed to put onto our doors, right? So to an extent, you know, uh, the house of Ephraim, Northern Kingdom, um, to an extent, they, of course, you know, they, they, kept, they, they, they kept the law. You know, did they fall off because they were breaking it? Absolutely. But at some point, you know, they did, you know, try to, you know, at least keep the law or at least some version of the law, which is why we have what's called a Karite and Samaritan Masusa, right? So let's go ahead and get into it. This article deals, deals mainly with the Masusa as it is used in rabbinic Judaism, but Karite Judaism and Samaritanism have their own traditions. Uh, do, 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 do I want to? I want to read that because I, I, I no, I'm gonna just get down to it. But yeah, if you see, you see right here, it quotes Deuteronomy 6 and 9 as well as 11, verse 20 in regards to the Masusa, right? But what we want is the one of the Samaritans because that's Northern Kingdom. The Samaritans interpret the Deuteronomic commandment to mean displaying any select text from the Samaritan version of the five books of Moses. This is this is contained a blessing or a particularly holy or uplifting message. In the past, they placed a stone plaque. Stone plaque. I want y'all to remember this. A stone plaque. Much like you see right over here. A stone plaque, right? A stone plaque inscribed with, uh, inscribed with the Ten Commandments. So again, in the past, a lot. In the past, they placed a stone plaque inscribed with the Ten Commandments above the house door. Some examples dating back to the Byzantine 4th, 7th century, early Muslim, 7th, 11th century, but we know what happened. It didn't really go that far. Um, periods uh, being now shown in the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. Nowadays, Samaritan Mezuzah is usually made of either marble, wood, and plate. So this is just going into modern day of people you know, pretending to be the actual Samarit the Samaritans, those of Northern Kingdom, you know, but again, it didn't just because let me let's let's get it. It's a lot. Let's actually get it. Lord in Christ. No, 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 do better.
No, we're not gonna we're not gonna auto search. That's the, that's not what we do. Y'all are so mean to me. They don't want to search it for me. They don't want to want to auto input what I'm writing. It's so rude and disrespectful. All right, let's uh, da, 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 da. let's start at let's start at six. Deuteronomy six and six. The and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk to and talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and it shall be and it shall be as for frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Right, and that's essentially you know that's. Let's see what eleven twenty says. But that that's what you do, cause like right, cause on on the outside of uh, on my doorpost, you know, I didn't buy one, but I I made them. So I just took some parchment, and I wrote and I wrote down the law, basically, you know. Same thing, Deuteronomy eleven and twenty, and essentially repeating the same thing. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates, right? Which is what the Samaritans did. You know, a lot of times they would actually write it on stone. Let me see if I can get that. Because I thought I saw it. Uh, well, either way, the main thing was a stone plaque. Is essentially where they would put it, right? And that's really the main point that I wanted to get as far as the Samaritan Masusa. It would be a stone plaque above their doorpost, right? So they were already, you know, using it in stone. And let's, uh, hold on. it's a lock here. I saw, where was it? I saw something on the actual language. Oh, summer, da 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 da. Did I skip it? So lucky, y'all. I want to make sure that I actually, you know, get this. Tablets for the law. I know I seen it. I seen it. I'm looking for you. I'ma find you. I'm gonna find you and make you know. How books of Moses. Da 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 da. So like, yo, it is very pertinent that I find what I'm looking for. Very very pertinent. So like, yeah. Okay, I had to put it on this page then. Torah, da, 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 da. Lunar past days and da 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 da. The promised land ain't what I'm looking for. Around Bethel. No. Where is it? I know I'm not tripping. There is literally, there is literally a portion of this where it actually said that they, you know, would write in what's called the Proto-Hebrew text. Like, do all this research and you lose stuff sometimes, man. Lord and Christ. Uh, Samar the Samaritan text was literally, it was literally highlighted in blue. Uh, 
I may not be able to find it. I can. Counselor, the king of the land of Joseph. Well, there's that. That's not what I'm looking for. How are you going to have something and then lose it? Ain't that eight, about eight? Yeah. Mm. It's history, religious texts. I really just went through here though. Salak, yeah, y'all. If I can't, if I can't find it here in a little bit, I'm just gonna go ahead and move forward. But they're really, alright, yeah, because I don't think I'm gonna find it here. See, they, they, they done took the information away. They didn't want me to give it to y'all, man. <laughs> all right, it's all good, though. But, yeah, this is, right now, this is just to show, you know, that there is other, there, it is to show, you know, Northern Kingdom, of course, still keeping the traditions that ha they, they had the law. You know, of course, at some point, they, you know, they forsook the law. That's why they went to their captivity which is what we're about to go into. I really want to find that passage. I'm about to just start like taking snapshots of stuff beforehand. This is ridiculous. All right, yeah. All right, we're moving forward. I can't find it. It is what it is. But yeah, that's the but like I said the main thing was really just, you know, to you know, read about what they call, you know, what they so-called Samaritanism is. Um, and really just to show, you know, Northern the Kingdom was still, you know, making masseuses, right? And of course, since they spoke that proto or what we would call Paleo-Hebrew, you know, that's what they would write it in. Not, not this guy, not, not, not this, not this, not that bastard right there, right? But let's go ahead, let's go ahead and get into some scripture now, all right? Now we finna get biblical on this. All right, so I'm gonna start with the book of Sadrach, chapter 47. Just to show, cause you know, some people will look this up like, oh, see, they'll, they'll think it's the actual, the, the people that are there now, no. Those people did not have the law, you know. This is the book of Sadrach, chapter 47 and verse 21. So the kingdom was divided, and out of Ephraim ruled a rebellious kingdom. And who and why is it mentioned Ephraim? Because Ephraim is the head of the northern kingdom. And how are they rebellious? They began to go off into idolatry and, and start uh, uh, um, going into the ways of the heathen that were round about them, right? So that's how they are a rebellious house. And we're going to read about that. And we're gonna make this full circle. So we're gonna we're gonna go into them being called this uh, being of Samaria, and then we're gonna go into them, you know, going to the captivity, and then we're gonna go into them fleeing that captivity to come over here to a, in an attempt to keep the law. This is the book of First Kings, chapter sixteen, and verse twenty-one. Then were the people of Israel divided, like we just read in the book of Sirach, you know, can be divided. Then were the people divide. Then were the people of Israel divided into two parts. Half of the people followed Tibnah, and the son of Githnoth to make him king, and half followed Omer. So that lets you know there you go. That's that's that kingdom split. You have northern kingdom going one way, you have southern kingdom going the other way, right? You know that's 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 why we, you know, a lot of brothers um, and some sisters out there, you know, they'll deny our northern kingdom brothers and sisters. But when you get down to the nitty gritty and look at who is here, and then you look up the archaeology and whatnot, you'll find that it, it is it was our people that was out here, right? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter seven, and verse nine. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. Why? Because you know that that's that's they that's they land. That's that was the capital, if I'm not mistaken. So when you read it, when you like when you read about the Samaritan woman in uh, in the book of Matthew in the New Testament, she would be of the Northern Kingdom. That's why she said her uh, our father Jacob, right? 
That's a Samaritan woman. Let me read that again. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah, Remaliah's son. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. So, you know, you, that, that's, that's just to establish, you know, Northern Kingdom in, a, in its association and, its, uh, um, and showing that its kingdom was, you know, headed in Samaria. Not Syria, but Samaria. So when we read about things like Samaritanism, know that it does not stem from the heathen that came after they were taken um, from their land and then taken into Assyria. And then those heathen came and moved in and worshipped other gods and, and also attempted to worship the Most High as well. You can read that in 2 Kings 17. Other heathen came in round about. Um, but understand that when he talks about you know Samaritanism, do remember that it was our brothers and sisters of the northern kingdom that was there. And of course, when they were taken captive, all they, uh, their stuff was there as well, right? And of course, since they, you know, mixed and mingled with the heathen, you know, following their traditions, you know, I'm pretty sure those heathen also observed and learned some of their traditions as well, right? Moving forward, this is the book of 2 Kings, chapter 17, and I'm going to start at verse 1. In the twelfth, in the twelfth year of Ahaz, Salakia, and in the twelfth year of Ahaz, of Ahaz, King of Judah began uh, Hoshea, the son of Elah, to reign in Sumeria over Israel nine years. So that lets you know who's reigning over the the kingdom of Israel, northern kingdom. And notices notice that it's telling you in Samaria because that's where the northern kingdom was. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, but not in the kings of the is and not and not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Why? Because he started to go off. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and Hosea came, became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of and the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea. So what? Hmm. These yawns is killing me, y'all. Salakia. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, for he had sent messengers, uh, Salak, for he had sent messengers to so king uh to so king of Egypt and brought no present to the king of Assyria, and he had done year by as he had done year by year, therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. And the king of Assyria came came up throughout all the land and went up into went up to Samaria and besieged it three years and in the ninth year of Hosea the king uh, in the ninth year of Hosea the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Syria this is this is northern kingdom the kingdom of Israel you know the house of Ephraim going into captivity under the Assyrian empire by way of Shalom and Ansar and besieged it three years of Salakia, uh, and carried away is and carried Israel away into into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in the and in Habor by the river by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. Right, my friend. Let me see something here. I just want to see something. Let's. See. Now let's see. Now we know that what's by there is what's called the Euphrates River, right? Let's see something. Let's see how many times this word appears. Oh, what is this? Goes on. A cut means cutting off. A Mesopotamian city on or near the middle of the Euphrates where exiled Israelites were settled. Wait the hell a minute. I ain't gonna lie, I didn't go to this earlier. I, I did not prep for this. this is, I'm moving in the spirit right now. So let's, let's, we're gonna keep that up right there, right? So this is where he took them. I'm gonna read that again. 
and placed him in Hala and in the harbor by the river of Gozan in the cities of the Medes. And it and so it was that the children of, that the children of Israel had sinned against Yahweh their power, which had brought them out brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt and had feared other gods, right? So again, this is Israel going into captivity. Why? Because of their idolatry and things of that nature. So let's keep this in mind. The city, one of the cities that they were taken to was Gozan, which means a cutting off a Mesopotamian city on or near the middle of the Euphrates where exiled Israelites settled, right? Now we're about to get into the nitty gritty. This is going to be the book of 2nd Ezra. Thirteen, and starting in verse forty, uh, thirty-nine. And whereas thou sawest that he gathereth another peaceable multitude unto him, those were the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Ho of Hosea. Hosea, the king, the king who Shalmanansar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. Then what did we just read in the book of Second Kings? Read it. We gonna, we gonna read it. We gonna do it again. We we gonna because there's a lot of people who don't believe that the people who we say the Northern Kingdom is, you know, they're like, well, how they get over the, the There's no way you can sell. They they just they they come with very redundant arguments, right? Let's read that again. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea. That's the same person that the, that we just read about in Second Ezra thirteen. And he had sent messengers. So the uh, wait, wait, wait. Do I skip the part? Da, 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 da. Oh, slot. No, verse three. And against him came up Shalom and Ansar, king of Assyria, and Hosea became his servant and gave him presents. What did we just read in verse in verse forty? Second Ezra thirteen and forty. Those were the ten tribes which were scattered, which were uh, select, not scattered, which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea. Hosea, the king who Shalmanansar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and came and came they to another land. How do you carry someone over a water? You put them on a boat, a ship, something that floats on water. And they took this counsel among themselves, so that now it's talking about the ten tribes, the house of Ephraim, the kingdom of Israel, the northern kingdom. And they took th this counsel among themselves, this is while they're in a captivity, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. So now this is northern kingdom coming together while they're in captivity in exile in Assyria saying that, that pretty much they're make they're making they're they're plotting on how to get out and go into a country where there's no heathen round about them where it's just themselves where they they can only deal with themselves and no other heathen nations that they might keep their statutes which they never kept in their own land what does this mean they were given laws statutes and commandments but were they keeping them in their land no, that's why they went. That's why they got sent into captivity because they were not keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments, right? And just to show that, going back to Second Kings seventeen, uh, I'm start at nine. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against Yahweh their power, and they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city, and they set them up images and groves in. Very, very, so oh my God, Salakia, been a long day, y'all. They set them in the high places of all their cities, from the tower, from the tower of the watchmen to the fin city, and they set them up images and groves, in every high hill and under every green tree, and there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen. Whom Yahweh carried away before them. They were doing the same things that the heathen were doing uh, uh, before they were there, right? And and wrought wicked things to provoke Yahweh to anger, for they served idols whereof Yahweh had said unto them, 
ye should not do this thing. Right? And that's why they got that judgment of getting carried away captive, right? Because they didn't do it in their land. It, they, they, you know, when the kingdom was whole, we was practicing when they, you know, when they had their own land, when they became the kingdom of Israel, the, the house of Ephraim, they weren't doing that. As we just read, they were falling into heathen customs, right? Verse 43 in 2 Ezra 13. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. And where did we read that they were at? And goes on. A Mesopotamian city on or near the middle of the Euphrates where exiled Israelites were settled. Why is this important? There's a lot of our people and a lot of so-called, uh, I, I would say Hebrew is like Christians. And of course, those of our people that are stuck in Christianity who say the Apocrypha, you know, isn't viable. But look, it says that they, one, were in Gozan in uh, 2 Kings 17, verse 6. And that word goes on, which is a city in Assyria, it goes on. A court, a quarry as a place of cutting stones goes on a province of Syria. You see that? And this is where they dwelt, a Mesopotamian city on or near the middle of the Euphrates, where exiled Israelites were settled. That's how they were able to attain a ship. This, was, this is literally, a, 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 if you really want to get into it, this would be a port city. If you have if you have any major town by a waterfront, especially back in the day, you're going to use it for import and exports. And if they were in Gozan and it's a quarry city, a place where they would cut stones, how what what easier way to move a lot of stones than to put them on ships and transport them to wherever you need to go? You would need an actual ship to load these stones on. You can't put them on like a a, a little rowboat or something like that. It'll sink. You would need a ship to do so. If you're going to transport these stones, whether it be to another city, another country, another kingdom, or whatever it is, whatever the trade that you're doing within the river of the Euphrates, you are going to need a ship to carry heavy stones. You got to do research. And I'm going to read that again. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river, for the Most High then shoot signs for them and still in... And had still the flood till they were passed over. For through for through that country there is a great way to go, namely a year and a half, and the same region was called Arsarith. Matter of fact, let's let me see this. Observing Moses, da 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 da, Colum <laughs> Hold on. Look at this. This is from JewishEncyclopedia.com by Morris Jostro, Kaufman Connor, blah, 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 blah. So, the name of the land beyond the great river, far away from the habitation of man, in which the ten tribes of Israel will dwell, observing the laws of Moses until the time of restoration, according to 13 Ezra's. Or uh, uh, thirteen, uh, uh, second Ezra, or at least an edition of Ezra, thirteenth chapter, forty-five. Columbus identified America with this land. C. Cursings, Christopher Columbus, translated by Doctor C. Gross, page fifteen. Cite your citations. Ooh, come on now. I was I was just trying to get a definition on it, but uh, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that right there. Come on, man. Get these sources out. Let's see. Uh, you know, let's. How long would it take to sail by boat from, let's say, you know what? Let's do it. Assyria to uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, 
Let's just see. I, I'm, I'm curious. Okay, these are yachts. It's not. You see, Google, this is Microsoft. Nope, they don't see. They don't want to give me that year. They don't. They don't want to give me that information. That's fine though. But yeah, by old sailboat, it would take at least about a year and a half to to get from Assyria all the way over to you know at least Puerto Rico, right? Or where the Americas would begin. So yeah, man, that's you know. And let's finish the scripture real quick. Then dwelt they there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come. So yeah, man, you gotta understand that these that the, that it, it, it is the it, the northern kingdom is who came over here. They're the they would be the ones to speak the Paleo Hebrew as well as be able to you know come over here and write this. And you'll see this in the videos, man. Look, look, come on, man. Come on, man. Look at this. You, you, you got to be kidding me to sit here and say, you know, that it's not our people that came over here. And do, look at this. This is the law. Like, come on now. And up here, you can see where, you know, people try to scratch it off. You know, when I went there, they did try to scrape it off. But the indentions of these letters of, of the Pedo Hebrew, they're so heavily grained in there. They couldn't even scratch all of it off all the way. Right. You know, they, they tried it. You know, this place is all marked up with graffiti, but right here, nobody touches. Why? Only the Most High could do that. And like we was reading earlier, where would they put the Ten Commandments? You know, they're, you know the Samaritan Masusa. They would put it engraved in stone plaques. Right? Granted, it would be above the door, but come on now. You can't tell me that it's not our people that's in here. All right? But, like I said... Um, if you're ever in Los Angeles, New Mexico, or in that area, I highly recommend going to going to be there. Um, it, it's it's and oh, also let me put this out there as well before I forget. Right outside of the uh, the garbage dump, which this is across the way from, when you have to literally leave, this is within I'd say, I'd say a football field, a hundred yards of the end and the beginning of the Laguna Indian Reservation. That's where this is outside of. It's literally right outside of an Indian Reservation. You, you, you gotta be, you, you gotta be really, really messed up in the head to sit here and think that the so-called Native Americans of, uh, the Native Seminole Indians um, and the Native Americans who we call the Latinos and Hispanics, that they're not our people. When this is literally in their land and right across a football field away, this stone is sitting across from a so-called Indian reservation, the Laguna tribe Indian reservation, man. And they have a plethora of land. And we know that, you know, America, they've done nothing. They, they, they keep downsizing those uh, uh, um, our, our, our tribesmen's lands like that, man. All right. But with that, I want to give call halal, abenau, yahawah, baha, shema, mashiach, malaki, shai. Shalom.